Hello and welcome to Behind the Scenes, a podcast where we talk about the intersection of art, culture, and big ideas. I'm your host, Sean Malone, creative director for the Foundation for Economic Education and creator of the Out of Frame video essay series on YouTube. Here today, as always, with Paul Nelson, Out of Frame Shorts editor, and Jennifer Mofsanti, Out of Frame Shorts writer. How are you guys doing? Doing really well. Excellent. Hanging in there. Just hanging in there. It is. Look, this is the most wonderful time of the year. This is the most wonderful time. Have you not is heard? Is it though? Is it though? All right. So, is it? It is Christmas. It, I don't know when exactly what what day this episode is coming out. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's going to be right around right around Christmas. And this is our last episode for 2020. Goodbye. Goodbye, 2020. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Uh, yeah. Let's. Uh, it was, a, it was a thing. I'm happy to leave 2020 behind in general, but... It happened. Let's just... Yeah. Yeah. Let's just try to move on. But I'd like to end the year on a, on a more fun note, I think. So we thought we would do kind of a Christmas special. We're, uh, we have a few things that we want to talk about today. First of all, of course, is Fat Man, which... Fat Man. Boy, we're going to have to talk about <laughs> We're going to have so much to talk about with Fat Man. That's going to be the main episode today, but uh, for our patrons, and if you are not a patron, please feel free to support the show at patreon.com slash outofframeshow. But for our Patreon bonus section, we're going to be talking about some of our favorite movies. So we're going to get into some personal stuff, movies that we like that are holiday themed, um, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. And even before we talk about Fat Man, because boy, there's a lot to talk about with Fat Man once again. <laughs> Um, this is also Jen's last in studio episode. Yeah. I Sad. Unless it you is. come back and visit us from Utah, but. I mean, I probably will. I hope so. You're a ski all the way here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I feel like no. <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah, so you're going to be moving to Utah? Yes. Real soon? Real soon. Getting ready. Yes. You all packed up? Not quite. Work. <laughs> <laughs> some of, some of the packing we're outsourcing. Like that's helpful. We're, we're having people come in, especially like the really breakable stuff, like the really nice china that you my have husband nice china. I do. I don't have. I have. You know what? My wife would be upset with me. For, we do have nice china. china. It's just I've forgotten about it because it is hidden somewhere. As all good china is. I don't know where it is. Even I it would be hard pressed to go find it. And oh, bring it, it would out. be dangerous if you did. <laughs> I'm told. That, I'm told that we have some. <laughs> I just don't know. We, my husband and I, got like a full twelve place setting, like wow, nice. set of really nice china from his grandmother when we got married, and we really like it. It's great china. It's beautiful. It's machine washable. Hmm. Like it's dishwasher safe. Hmm. Is and it, it, it? Is it like ornate? Does it have? It has a, a really lovely kind of minimalistic design hmm. on it. Surprised you put that in dish, dishwasher. Yeah, it's it's lovely. But we're gonna have that professionally packed because that means it can be insured on the trip out oh. there by the moving company. Fair yes. enough. So that you know the electronics. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have burly men move the heavy things. All that. All that good stuff. I've moved, I've lost count. I've moved a tremendous number of times in my life. I am at a point now where having burly men move my objects for me is like the greatest thing in the world. I know. If I'm thinking about moving, yeah. like again, we were talking about last week about bringing my uh, parents-in-law down mm -hmm. to Atlanta from Maryland. That's going to be a good chunk of that is is having other people do that work if we can. It's not enjoyable. It's no. not. And also just how much more efficient they are at doing their mm. job than you yeah. are. Holy cow. Yeah. It's like, oh, this would take me two days. It took you two hours. Yeah. yeah. All right. When we and had, it probably would have involved a trip to the emergency room, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. When, I don't think any of our listeners or, or viewers know this actually, but a few years ago, you know, we had a, we had a big flood in our apartment. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an insane story. Lightning, lightning strike hit the roof of our apartment building. We were on the top floor. And um, broke a, like, 
you know, shattered a lot of the wood and stuff. And I think what happened was one of the wooden beams fell on one of the sprinkler system pipes, breaking the fire sprinkler system pipe, flooding all of that right into my office. <laughs> and then yeah. downstairs into our living room and into our kitchen and everything else. And it was pretty brutal. But um, we had we had then my insurance company paid for, you know, people to come out and like, box everything up and, and pack everything and clean everything up and, and whatever. And to that point, man, my God, were they fast. Yeah. Like, they, it was insane how how good they were at doing that. But it's just it's just another comparative advantage thing, man. Like, you, you do that, it, that's your job, and you do that all the time, you get good at it. Mm-hmm. Practice. Specialization. I, on the other hand, just moved every year or two for, like, 12 years, and... Not a fan. While while that made me good at the overall idea of moving, never made me better at packing. Yeah. And I hated it. Yeah. I hated every second of it. So that was always pleasant. And by the time this episode comes out, most of the like non-essential things that we decided we absolutely want to keep, like, you know, Summer Small businesses. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, no. We're not keeping any of those. Oh. Like, summer clothes. Like, yeah. 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 Summer clothes. <laughs> Books that we're not actually reading right this moment. That yeah. kind of stuff has already been packed up and put in boxes down in the garage ready yeah. for we're at, to, We were actually talking about sort of preemptively putting – some of like DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff in boxes. We we don't don't we watch them. No don't watch them. Like I don't necessarily want to get rid of them because there there's a lot of stuff that's either still hard to find digitally or you can't buy it digitally or I don't know. There's just, just like the tiniest little bit of paranoia that I have of like doing everything digitally and if you know I don't have internet or if these systems do something stupid. Then you know it'd be nice to have some of the yeah. some of the stuff. Absolutely. But at the same time, it just sits on shelves, doing nothing. Yeah. So it's a crazy world, where when I was in college, I was like rummaging through blockbuster like like used DVD right. bins to try to get like you know a couple dollar DVDs or whatever. And now I'm like literally anything I want in two clicks. Pretty much. Yeah. You know. Pretty much. Yeah. It's crazy. But um, yeah, what are you guys watching right now, by the way? Or any, probably nothing at this point. Well. Finished Korra. Yeah, we finished <coughs> Legend of Korra, finally. Um, it was, it, we've talked about <laughs> this, but like the seasons for, for mm-hmm. Legend of Korra feel very out of order. Uh, I agree. narratively as, and also like as far as like levels of stakes are mm-hmm. concerned that's the big um, thing to me I think is having the the sort of the world level sort of avatar like just the the, the existence of the avatar at stake yeah that's the that's, biggest that's the biggest stake. one that should have been <clears throat> season four you would think you'd think but but it wasn't whatever stakes stakes What are you watching? Nothing. What I'm doing, though, is playing. So (laughs) (laughs) I have... Paul Paul built a PC. No. I built the PC by paying someone to do it. (laughs) Um, I'm sorry, Pavel. I just... you know, found a good We're, deal. It's this Black is, Friday. This is such a, uh, this is like an inside baseball thing. But but our producer, Pavel, has built the computers that he's using. I built the computer that I use. And, uh, and then we were talking to our one of our, our, um, our developer, our web developer at Fee, who, of course, also builds computers. And then he asked the question yesterday, like, did you build your, <laughs> did you build it, Paul? Of course not. No, Paul doesn't build. That's nobody. Not, that's nobody. not what Paul does. But nobody does. Oh. I mean, that's, and that's an insane thing, too. Like, yeah. What's wild to me is I was looking through the graphics cards, the level of graphics cards I wanted to, to get. And thanks to COVID, it, there are a lot of them are hard to procure, and so prices mm-hmm. have gone up. And Black Friday came around and Cyber Monday, and there were, surprise, deals on 
pre, pre, okay. pre-built computers. So, so anyways, the reason why I even got to this point is PlayStation, Sony has royally messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was I up. could see you visibly <laughs> catch yourself. <laughs> Messed up the rollout of the PlayStation 5, which mm-hmm. I have been I have been a PlayStation user since the PlayStation. So yeah. 20 years. And I and the reason why I've always kind of want to get a PC because there's been some games that I want to play that you cannot play on on PlayStation. And this happened, the rollout happened and I'm like this is the time. This is it. I don't. There's there's the games that I play on PlayStation with friends. I can play on PC. Still play with them cross cross platform. But the, then I get the access to the games that I've been wanting to play. Um, yeah. And so far, it's been fantastic. What are you playing? I all I all I do so far. This will change. <laughs> but right now, I I have started my virtual racing career. Oh, I hey. fantastic. Yes, I I downloaded iRacing. And paid for it is kind of expensive, but it, it's a lot of fun. Um, speaking of which, your family should do this, Jen. Um, yeah, I know. It, 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 you, it, we're, it's a lot of fun. We're, we're do you, working up do to you, it. Are there... let, me, let me finish buying the house first. <laughs> well, you, when you build your garage, you just put a little section in for like a full motion simulation rig. Yeah. Oh, so that's yeah, what I was going to ask. Really like, to, what, to what extent is there like... Like, is there a steering wheel? Oh, like you're like, I, so I have a steering wheel and pedals. I mean, you kind of have to have You don't have to have it. You can do it with the controller, but... Yeah, and it doesn't seem it's right. hard. It defeats the purpose. It defeats the purpose. It's a little harder to drive with the controller, but um, especially with this game, it's not like a Need for Speed where it's built to be yeah. played with your controller. But um, what, what fascinates me is just the ecosystem that has built around this, in, in particular, this game. So this game is like, 12 years old, but they continually update it. But things from like producers that build steering wheels, pedals, nicer steering wheels and pedals, sim racing boots. Huh. Wait, what's yes. that? What, what? So basically driving shoes, but for but built for the sim racer in mind. So they, they're not as thick soled. They're thinner. Well, racing boots are really thin soled to they're begin. Even, they're even thinner. Because you don't have Just to worry about fire. Slipper, slippers, <laughs> socks. socks. Well, that's that's what I do. I wear socks, but some people just need a little bit of that. <laughs> okay. They, they just need to spend a little bit more money. That. You know what? <laughs> it's fine. They need, that. It's they, fine. Need, they need some breathable socks. Um, but they also have gloves. I mean, that's standard. <laughs> but then past that, you got you got people that coach. You have people that paint cars for people. You have people that sponsor a car like it's this whole is there ecosystem. like a driving simulation for just like sunday drivers just like i leather driving gloves and just very calmly through like the english countryside or something like that. there there are like trucking simulators yeah <laughs> <laughs> long haul trucking simulators oh my goodness no i am this is a I am whole world. generally interested in i racing i think i think my kids would love it I don't know so much about my husband. But your kids have go kart now. They so. do have a go kart. Yeah. And but it's not the same thing as like getting out and like <laughs> getting behind a computer. Well, and it's doing the same thing. The the kind of access uh-huh. that that we have is is good. Look, I just want to throw out here the 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 difference between My mom, when I was little, going, get away from the TV and go outside, go play outside, to you going, well, they have a go-kart, but they could play inside. (laughs) Well, okay. like Inside is nice. Inside is very nice. During the winter, go-kart is not, like, super thick. Ice racing is a thing, and we're actually really looking forward to trying it. I don't know how I feel about that, but all right. Good luck. <laughs> Have fun. Um, no. But iRacing will allow my children to get, quote unquote, behind the wheel of a car and like go run spa. Sure. You know, like, or. <clears throat> yeah. Pretty much oh, so many tracks, know. so many different cars. And for me, like, I've I've always wanted to race cars, but. Mm-hmm. With my it's family so situation, it's, it's, well, that. It's also really expensive. expensive. Yeah. So, I'm like, you look through the costs and it's like, so you get the competitiveness, which is a big deal for me. I, it just that, scratches that itch pretty well. 
and it's a fraction of the cost. Yeah. But you still kind of get that same. Obviously, it's not like driving it's a real not car, exactly but the yeah. same thing. it's no. pretty darn close um, <laughs> for what it is. And yeah, so if anybody races, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I I I love this. <laughs> I am ready to run. Oh man. We should get a fee team. You, you want to go fast? I you want to go fast. I, that's what I live my life for is going fast. <laughs> if you're not first, you're last. Exactly. <laughs> no. Oh, my gosh. All right. So I'm going to – I was going to talk about Yellowstone, but I'll save that for another time, I think, because I want to I wanna get into Fat Man. And I will say one of the things that, that I can segue with this a little bit is, is that, like, the complexity of – Christmas presents today versus mm. where, you know, you imagine like the mythology of Santa Claus and kind of how that kind of came about. And the idea of like somebody just walking around giving out gold coins to people or maybe like, you know, just a little bit of money or little trinkets like wooden carvings and stuff yeah. like that. To now giving out like you know eye racing games and like steering wheels and pedals and and you know capitalism play, man PlayStation fives if you can get one right <laughs> um, you know like all that kind of stuff is just it's bonkers and and so that is in fact the problem for Chris Kringle at the beginning of this movie it's one of the problems I think yeah. that he has is that uh, kids don't really believe in Santa anymore. They, they're not as good as they used to be. They're kind of getting worse. People are not so nice, you know? And he's not changed his rules for who's naughty and nice. So, you know, as so the world gets naughtier, he just... He's only delivering half the presents. He's now. only delivering half yeah. the presents. And, and it turns out, for some reason, he the way that he funds his operation is through some kind of state subsidy, which his contract is based on the volume of toys he actually delivers. And if he's not delivering as many toys, he gets mm-hmm. a lower payout. This seems... So con- let's, let's continue yeah. on. I so, don't want to get sidetracked so I'm already, because there's a lot I'm, to talk about. I'm already a little confused by this, and we can talk about this in a second. But uh, ultimately, the government has a proposal for him. They, they come and say, look, we know that we're not paying you as much as we used to, because you're not delivering as many toys, but what if you took your workshop, because you're not doing as much with it now, and you start making circuit boards and things for, for the F-92. <laughs> F-92, which I'm not even sure what that is. Uh, Missile? F-29. F-29. I think it's just the... Just a version, yeah. a variant of that. Yeah. Um, for, yeah, for airplanes and missiles and bombs and whatever. Um and we'll pay you even more. And in fact, you'll be so happy with this arrangement, the next year we'll probably do it again. Now, Santa Claus, played by Mel Gibson, <laughs> which is just already a thing that you just can't imagine even saying, but, but here I am saying Santa Claus, as played by Mel Gibson, uh, doesn't like this arrangement. He, this is not what he wants. It's not what the elves want either. They don't, they don't want... To yeah, be they making, wanna, they no. want to be making toys. They want to be making toys. They want to make people happy. They want to make people happy. But they are, they believe in Santa Claus, and they know that he's got their best interests at, at heart. And he gives a pretty compelling speech. He's like, "Look, if there was any other way to do this, I would, you know, I would have taken that option. But this is just the only way that we're going to survive." And they agree to do it. And yeah. by God, they make the best. Uh, you know, the circuit boards. circuit boards and whatever that they're trying to make. In record time. In record time. They're the most efficient contractor the government's ever had. And they're very excited about this. But meanwhile, meanwhile, a little boy who is angry at having gotten coal in his stocking sends a for, hitman. For being a terrible kid. For being Let's, a terrible like kid. He deserved it. Again, Santa Claus, he's, he's making... The right judgment calls with Naughty uh, Nice. He checked the I list. So. He checked it twice, I'm sure, right? He's found out. <laughs> Would you like to finish the <laughs> sentence, Jen? <laughs> no. Fair enough. Look, we know. <laughs> Dang it. Dang it, Paul. We know who's Naughty or Nice. <laughs> All right. The thing is. The boy is not good. He's not a good guy. He no. he he threatens a little girl who won hired, the science fair. Hired the hitman to kidnap this girl. <laughs> hired this hitman to kidnap this girl so he could 
force her to like rescind her first place ribbon at the science lie fair. Lie and say she cheated. Yeah, lie and say she cheated was going to ruin her record for later science yeah. fairs. Never going to be good because he's never lost a science fair before and he's a greedy little jerk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, so he sends a hit man, Walton Goggins <laughs> from Justified and I guess The Unicorn on Netflix uh-huh. and stuff. Um, who I really like. I really like Walton Goggins in general, who also has issues with Santa Claus. Yes. Yes. Because he was a naughty boy as well. I mean, he's now a murderer, so. Grew up to be a hitman and was a naughty kid. Yeah, who knew, right? Weird. So, boy, gun battles. Oh, man. U.S. Yeah. military fighting a, a well-trained possibly sort of spy level like cia kind of hitman it's unclear where he got his training but he got some oh no but he was very good he was very good taking out and they set it up very so that so the whole movie is every character and everything that they do is set up so well to go to the third act yeah and then it's like when you get to the third act which ratches it up the ridiculousness it's like oh no this makes total sense oh yeah Santa Claus. Well, of course, the elves would do that when we when we first. Well, I don't know if it's like the first thing we meet. It may be. Is he shooting the cans when we first meet him? Yes. yes. Yeah. So the very first scene we meet Mel Gibson as Santa Claus, who, by the way, everybody calls him Fat Man, the Fat Man. He's not that fat. No. So it's kind of weird, but fine, fine. We're going that direction. He's literally he's target shooting some cans. Uh, with a with a pistol, and um, that's not what I expected Santa Claus to do. But you know, I guess if you live in Alaska, when in Rome, why not? You know, I mean. But uh, yeah. Uh, so we, again, to Paul's point, we set up the fact that Santa Claus has some. He's got some skills, skills with a gun, unique skills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we also set up the fact that he can't. I don't know if he can't be killed. Seems like he can't be killed. He is immortal. But he he definitely heals. Yes. Yeah. He gets shot at when he's he goes out and does some Christmas deliveries and gets shot. Takes a to, rifle the, round to the gut yep. and he's it's, just like pouring nah, rubbing nah, alcohol nah. on it. Slap <laughs> slap a bandaid on and be like, ah, it'll heal in the normal way. Yeah. yeah. The usual way. But here's the thing: this movie is in no way whimsical. No. There's nothing about this that is a standard Christmas. There's no fairy dust or twinkly magic or like the elves workshop is not like filled with gumdrops and candy canes. And it's just just a nice, pretty well laid out factory. Yeah. yeah. It uses all those expectations yeah. that you have for Christmas. Yeah. And uses those to subvert your expectations. Yeah. But then also fulfill them at the same time. Yeah, we don't. There's no reindeer in this either. No, yeah. there's reindeer. Yeah, there the are. good thing it was not Blitzen because he would have... Chomped your... Wait, yeah. What? You, yeah. Did you... Did, did you, I miss this? Oh, you may have. Or There was we a can, lot There was a lot going on. We can it's spoil fine. this a little bit. We can spoil I may have missed something bit. here. I didn't uh, remember... But there's like a couple of like Wait, governments... Wait, hold on. Before we go into... I got to say, the, the reason why I wouldn't know or why I, I could have missed this is because like the actual Santa Claus delivering toys bit is like... Never happens. It, it's a it's, flash in this movie. It's it just, is you, you see him screen. working on the sleigh... And then he, he goes out in. and does the thing, and he comes back, and that's it. Yeah. So, um, when he find when Santa Claus Chris finally accepts the the government contract, there's a couple of like toadies that come out to right, try to yeah. try to convince him, and they're like in the barn or whatever, and he's feeding the oh Chris yeah. is feeding the reindeer, and like well, nips Donner like nips. At one of the one huh. of the dudes, wasn't even paying attention to it. I was just thinking about those those guys. This is what's so great about this movie is that little things like that. It's none of the Christmassy stuff. Yeah. But it just it's just oh yeah. There's of course he has those reindeer. Of course they're named that, and of course they would bite you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> there. This movie's so weird. It's, and by the way, I enjoyed this movie, and I know you guys really enjoyed this. Movie. <laughs> yes. Well. I like it for sort of a meta reason, though, I think. Like, I like it because I really like movies in a category that I feel like 
maybe if I can say it this way, it shouldn't exist. Like, this is not a movie that I can imagine anyone green lighting. I can't, I, I would love to have a conversation with the writers and there were um, the, uh, Isham and Ian Nelms who wrote and directed this movie. They've done almost nothing else. They've done some shorts and some very, very little things. This is like their first big movie as far as I can tell. It's not even a very big movie. This is yeah. not a huge budget movie. I couldn't find budget numbers on this movie, but I can't imagine it was very much. They did it in a way that you didn't need a lot. No, yeah. that's and that's part of it is too, like it's, it's set primarily, I mean, there's a couple urban households and stuff, but like overwhelmingly this is like Santa's just kind of off the grid ranch in Alaska. You know, it's not, yeah. well, really in Canada, but um, but you don't need much. You, it's not a huge cast. And the cast that you have, I mean, obviously Mel Gibson's probably relatively expensive. Walton Goggins probably a little bit expensive, but like there's not really anybody else in the cast who's like particularly notable. Right. Um, the, the Mrs. Claus, Ruth Kringle, uh, played by Marianne Jean-Baptiste. Um, I actually didn't really know before. I assume she's Canadian, but I'm not sure. I've seen um, her in a few things. Maybe British. She's, I believe she's British. But she's she's seen, outstanding. She's really good I've in this. enjoyed her in everything I've seen her in. Yeah, she, she was a very good... She was a, a very good sort of counterbalance to him. Mm -hmm. She's She was... And also in the, in the world, I think she was a good counterbalance because... Again, so much of the kind of mythology is like Mrs. Claus is just like overly sweet baking cookies. She's baking cookies and stuff, but she's also like not goofy or naive or anything like that. She's they're good partners. Yeah, you can see this woman existing they're, in real life. Uh huh. Yeah. They're okay. I I just want to interject here. The relationship between Ruth and Chris Kringle. Is one of the realest married relationships I've ever seen portrayed in a movie. Like it yeah. was yeah. excellent. Like she's fussing at him for <laughs> using her good towels yeah. and dripping sweat yeah. on the floor. <laughs> but also in <laughs> like but in a way where it's mostly like kind of like mockery and it's kind it's of like, flirty. Yeah, because it's like not it's, like she's gonna be mad at him for it really, but it's like uh, hey, hey, like you, you know better than this. Yeah, like this is this is a couple that has clearly been together for many years, probably they're, hundreds of years. They're used Who to knows? each other. Who knows? And and each other's foibles <laughs> and like tendencies and stuff like that. It yeah. was just such a yeah sweet real moment. What yeah. a weird but in hey, this strange strange. But this film. is my, this is my point. Like all this stuff like actually works, but I just. I imagine a situation where somebody tried to get this movie, the Nelms brothers, I guess, um, must have tried to get this movie made mm -hmm. for a bit. Probably. And then my assumption is somehow it made its way to Mel Gibson and Mel Gibson said yes. And then once Mel Gibson says yes, you can you, get you a few a million movie. dollars yeah. to, to do this. I don't imagine the movie cost more than... 20 million, maybe 30 million, if that. If that. If that yeah. um, you could have probably done this movie for more like five or 10, but um, With, I don't imagine they did. No. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, they had some like practical effects that there's were some, pretty. There's some practical know. effects, and, and all that stuff is very well done. And yeah. It's, it, there's nothing in it that but they don't need. They clearly. They don't need a bunch of CG. They no. don't yeah. need a bunch of. Um, they clearly spent their budget. Intelligently on the like, actors, <laughs> which, well, but, but yes, yeah. no, that's, that's where you fantastic. want to spend it. That's where you want to spend it. But that's it's a testament to to writing a really smart script in terms of a, a production script, right? Yeah, it's a testament to like limiting yourself to like locations that you know you can get for a long period of time mm -hmm. that you know you can do, you can shoot sort of unmolested, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. for like for a few days or a few weeks and not having a bunch of big set pieces or anything yeah. where you need to to build a bunch of stuff or do a bunch of visual effects or anything like that. You know, mm -hmm. you, you don't, I mean, I don't even know if you would have had a green screen in this movie. I, you know, you might have had a little bit of like... Um, maybe the elves factory, maybe. Maybe, maybe but I think but you, you could probably do most not. of that with masking and like set extensions, and you yeah. probably wouldn't need to do a whole lot. You're going to need to do a little. I I did see somebody had mentioned there was a gaff where there was the name of the K 
Canadian town that they actually shot this in that appeared on the thing, even though oh. it was supposed to be an Alaskan town. Stuff like that, though. It happens. It's so little. Um, I didn't notice. Yeah, but boy, what a weird movie. <laughs> so, so this is this is uh, one of the most well-made movies I have seen in a long time. There were, <laughs> which surprised me. So, yeah. with the trailer, I was expecting a little like a slapsticky, like not I had no idea what to expect. From and I was not expecting this. This had this was it was kind of a s- sad movie that it had a great message um but what i appreciated so much about this movie which a lot of stuff just doesn't do nowadays or really anytime is everything was on screen was on screen for a reason Mm -hmm. and it paid off at the end yeah so you had the soldiers and the and um, and the government every one of them was incompetent Mm -hmm. and then of course walter (laughs) walton goggins could mow through them they couldn't even hammer a nail yeah (laughs) and And yep. but everything with Chris Kringle with showing he has superhuman strength. Yep, uh, it mm-hmm. all adds up. And <laughs> that, was, that was funny too. He just like they're speaking of incompetent government people, like they're, they're driving a pallet for you know like a forklift, and, yeah. and like the pallet falls over with all the stuff on it. And then and then Mel Gibson's Chris Kringle just comes up and just sort of oh, let me help you out with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm putting it back after up. these these two these young really beefy strapping guys soldiers can't, can't, can't move it can't at all. Budget. Yeah, and then grumpy old Mel Gibson Saint comes. Nick. Yeah, yeah, Saint Nick. So, yeah, so, so it was. Uh, it was. It was the best movie of this year for me. <laughs> I know that's not a deep bench. It is not, unfortunately. But yeah. it is. It is. I I, I kind of I went through looked through other movies that were released this year, and I honestly think this is the best. You're going to say that over Tenet. Yes. Wow. One hundred percent. Wow. As far you know, as I'm the biggest Chris Nolan fanboy, but yeah. you really are. But this, okay, this right. was storytelling, acting. The performances were fantastic. Perf- performances, really yes. Good. And just the the story was spot on. It's so weird. And also the kid. No, the kid's good. The kid was fantastic. In it the is, worst way. In the worst way. The, so my my I have to give my, my father pointed this out to me, and I just I absolutely lost it. It's an evil Ben Shapiro. <laughs> That's what the kid is. It's true. Yeah, he is. It is He's true. He's a little baby, baby sort of evil Ben Shapiro. It's hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh, no. That's so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, man. So, Paul, talk to me about the message that you see in this movie. You said it's had a great message. So, so it's, throughout it, it's like the world's getting worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, you... you St. Nick is kind of, Chris is depressed that he can't change it anymore, but he's not really doing anything besides delivering presents to change it. Yeah. And at the end of the movie, after he dispatches of, yes, spoiler alert, uh, I think we got this far. He wins. He wins. He wins. Santa wins? Yes. Santa. <laughs> look, all right, we're going to just spoil the heck out of this Be- because why not at this point? But. He gets shot in the head. Yeah. Yeah. Point like I actually because of the the tone of this movie, I thought could my, have easily gone. My jaw dropped. I was not expecting that. Me too. Me and neither. I was like, and but then be, especially because again, because of the tone of the movie, he, I just was like, well, that's it. Yeah. Santa's dead. Okay. They they did it. Walton Goggins wins. I I guess. I like, guess. where do we go from here? You know, and then of course Mrs. Claus comes out and shoots him, and and that 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 also tracked too. Again, like it it made sense. She's up there with him. They're not. They keep guns under their bed. Yeah, yeah. You know, like they're not. <laughs> All checks out. And like yeah. when the alarm started going off, she immediately oh yeah, she was prepared, like helping him load she, magazines. She's getting and ready to go. Like she's. He prepared. They've been through this before. Yeah. As Chris says. Okay, so you think this you, is the first time? You think you're the first. <laughs> oh, my. Oh why? My goodness. Why would there have been more? That's why we need another movie. I know. Paul <laughs> wants it. Paul wants an extended universe. Yeah. I want to know. An extended universe. I want to know where is, is Fat Man it. in the Marvel Universe? And if so, I want him to be fighting Thanos. Oh, man. Because, oh. yeah. Because uh, he's superhuman. And he is superhuman. Kill. But he's, I don't know. I don't know where he ranks in the, I don't know what the extent of his powers are. He's immortal. He's basically, he's God. He's a God. I know, but I don't know what the extent of his abilities. That's what we need to find 
I think we. <laughs> so we that's we, a, that's we also need to explore this sort of the weirdest further. thing is yes. that there are things that are unexplored with this movie that you don't need to explore in the context of the story. No, like no. You're, it just you're, makes sense. It's it, yeah, because it is relying on your your sort of there is preemptive a, understanding of the mythology. There but. is a lot of implied storytelling in this film, mm-hmm. and I appreciate yeah. that. So I do too. All right. So uh, the the me- like so at the end. He, He's going through this entire journey of like I'm, I'm washed up, I'm old. Yeah. I, I, what can I contribute to this world? He's kind of complaining to his wife the whole time. Right. I yeah. just it feels very human. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, everyone yeah. goes through this. Yeah. And at the end, Walton Goggins wakes him up, so to speak, and he decides to start doing something, and that's basically turn into Krampus. <laughs> I mean, we assume. Well, he implied it. <laughs> I will grab you out of your sheets. If, <laughs> yeah, I will when, come yeah. when you're sleeping. Yeah, yeah. and that's he visits the. Uh, so the, he's the boy. he is going to yeah. make people behave if they like it or not. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or not, but it's the message to me is like, and now you have you have control over things. Yeah, and, and now it's robot Santa and Futurama, and that's just where we're at at this point. <laughs> Goodness. Goodness. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's it's a really weird, interesting movie. Um, I definitely recommend it, by the way. Like it's, oh, yes. It's such a strange one. I don't know that it's, it's, it's just, it's going to be hard to fit it into your, you know, you're not going to go like Miracle on 34th Street and then A Christmas Story and then It's a Wonderful Life and then maybe Elf and then, you know, close it out with Fat Man. Like, <laughs> I don't feel like you're going to do, Paul might, <laughs> might do that. <laughs> But yeah, if you went from Fat Man to Krampus, that might actually <laughs> go the direction. You're I mean, that, that last shot was creepy. But um, um, yeah, this is the first time. So I rented it on VOD. This is the first time that I regretted that. Yeah. I feel like I wasted five bucks because I should have bought it. I want to watch it again. I probably will go buy it. Yeah. I loved it. I <laughs> Mel Gibson, best actor. I know that'll never happen, but we don't have a lot to choose from for the Oscars. That is actually that's a weird. True. That's a weird thing about this year too. People started talking about uh, talking about awards for this year, and and boy, the choices I've seen so far have been really weak. And then some of the things that people have already won, so like some of the award ceremonies have already taken place. I've seen people talking about stuff on on Instagram or whatever, and it's like, why? Why? Why are you uh, not not to? I think in a normal year, extraction, for example, I, I think won a bunch of uh, won a bunch of like Critics Choice kind of awards. I don't remember if it's Critics Choice or not, but it won like you know Best Action Movie or something. I'm like, no. I mean it. It's that man's better. It existed. <laughs> Like extraction. Yeah, that existed. was the thing. Like it existed. It was a movie that came out this year, and so. Every single give award a, given in 2020 needs to have the asterisk oh, yeah. next to it. Yeah. Or just give it to everyone in Fat Man. <laughs> or that. Because no, Mel Gibson's great. You know, as dark as this story yeah. was, as weird as this movie was, it was still utterly delightful. Yeah. It's it, so strange. There were times when my husband and I had to pause the movie so that we could finish laughing. <laughs> like, <laughs> that kind of thing. Which, again, this movie's... It's it, not a here's comedy. A, here's the thing. I keep saying that. It's but it is it's funny. not it, the movie is not meant to be funny, but it's also not funny unintentionally. Exactly, it is funny. There are funny bits in it, but it's not be, it's not awkward funny. It's not like oh wow they really screwed that up. It's like this situation is enough to be so bizarre. Following that it, the assassin on his long road trip. Yeah, oh, yeah, or when he's at the well, he's, post office trying to figure out where to even look for this guy. At a pet store being told that he's a snake guy or a lizard guy and not, <laughs> not a gen- gerbil guy. Not even a hamster he's, guy. Or a hamster or whatever when he's He's got a hamster and he's that, trying to like find a hamster. That meal would, oh man. And then putting the hamster on the dashboard. Oh my goodness. Like everything. It's so ridiculous. It makes sense. There is a level of absurdity to it. And which you have to None lean it, into if you write if exactly. you've written this movie and you're not going to be prepared to lean into that level of and absurdity. And they do lean into it. They uh, play it so straight. So weird. And it's 
just the best thing. I loved this movie yeah. and I am also probably going to go buy and actually I like, just go back and actually purchase this I movie. just because the because the delta between renting and buying was pretty low I just bought it cuz I I'll See, do that. Well, if it's between me, if it's Mr. like your smart person. Look, if it's be, if it's <laughs> if it's like a 5 to 10 dollar difference I'm like yeah just do it. I, I, and I, if I never come back to it I never come back to it but you know no, I, I want to. But I'll come back. To I want to hear the commentary from Mel Gibson. I want to. I want to get the behind yes. the scenes stuff. Actually, wa- <laughs> that is a great point. I haven't looked on Voodoo yet to to look at the if there are any additional there things. There must be. I, I I'll want take a look bonus at features. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's let's wrap our discussion here on Fat Man. G- guys, go watch Fat Man. It's watch it. Watch it's, it. Please it's insane make and weird. Make sure the but kids are in bed. This yeah. is not a film for children. No, this is not a Christmas movie for the young kids. But, but it's also not. It's not too bad. It's way. I thought it was going to be just no. blood and guts everywhere. Uh, no, it's and not. It's, it's not. not that. But at the same time, it's it's a bit. Yeah. I would not let my ten year olds watch it. No. But if I had like thirteen, a thirteen, fourteen, fifteen year old, I would. I feel that way. Yeah. Yes. No. It's this, it's not a hard R. No. This is a this is going to be a, cl- a cult classic. <laughs> oh, one hundred percent. You're probably right about that. Like, this is going to be this is going to be a Christmas story, but this is going to be Christmas what? Story. All right, <laughs> what Mel Gibson's <laughs> legacy actually. Is. Mad Max, if you're Mad Max, whatever. <laughs> yeah, Mad all Max. that nah. lethal weapon. Yeah, this is what people remember. Passion of the Christ. That <laughs> man. Apocalypto. Braveheart. None of that. <laughs> it was all building up to this. <laughs> Patriot. <laughs> no. It was. It was just. It was all subtext all, for Fat Man. <laughs> all, all leading to Fat Man. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, just a quick, quick couple thoughts before we go. Um, it's been an interesting year, I think, yeah. for everybody. It's a little bit of an under, understatement. Um, doing this show uh, has been one of my favorite things. Uh, I'm, I'm glad we started doing it. It's, it's been a really good thing for us to come and do every week and, and to hang out and, and have these kinds of conversations. We hope to have a ton more of them next year. Uh, we're going to figure out how to, you know, turn Jen into robot Jen and she'll just be off to the side or we'll, we'll do something with that. But um, the show's not going to change too much next year. If you are a patron, obviously we're going to stick around and we're going to be talking about our, some of our favorite Christmas movies that are not Fat Man, because now Paul's favorite <laughs> Christmas movie has been replaced, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> but um, if you're not a patron, that's okay. Thank you so much for supporting the show anyway and watching and listening and, and watching Out of Frame on YouTube and and just being there for, for all the things that we've been doing at Fee for the last few years. Uh, totally appreciate that. Uh, if, if you want to support the show you know, via Patreon, it's patreon.com slash show. And I, I think I mentioned this last week, if you're... If you're not comfortable with Patreon for whatever reason, we're going to start uh, adding some other options like a subscribe star, and we're actually going to be expanding a little bit more. So we'll have uh, a Discord, I think, next year, and then we're going to have um, a TikTok, and we're just going to start diversifying a little bit of what we do. So, you know, stick around, and I think next year when we come back, you'll you'll see a few more things from, from Out of Frame, which I'm pretty excited about. But um, yeah, have a happy holidays, everybody, and have a great new year if, if we, you know, if you don't see us on YouTube. But um, thanks for watching. See you next time.